Oh, hey there. Good morning. How are you? Just wait for this to pop up so that I can see it. Make sure we're live. Wait for some people to hop on. Let me go ahead and share this. I apologize in advance for my hair. It looks terrible because I need to get it cut. This week we are talking about taming the tongue. Good morning, Salt Shaker. Thank you for watching. We'll wait just a few minutes. Let me know when you hop on, where you're watching from, what the weather is like this morning, where you are. Then we'll get going. Good morning. We got some people hopping on now. Finally decided to wake up. Good morning, Corey. You gotta let us know where you're watching from so we can get started. And give me one more second and we'll get going. Done and hopped right back off. How excellent of it. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy that pursue us every day of our lives. We thank you that your mercies are brand new every morning. We thank you for the breath in our lungs. We thank you for this opportunity to share your word. We thank you that you've entrusted us to share your word. I ask that those watching, those listening, would receive wisdom, knowledge, and revelation from your word this morning to start their days. I uh, thank you that as they go about their days and meditate on what we share this morning, that they would receive even more revelation from your word. We thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Well, for those of you that are still sleeping and will join me later, thank you for hopping on and pray for me that I get a haircut soon. So if you've seen me wearing a hat a lot, that's because I haven't got my haircut. So we're talking about taming the tongue. We're going to start today in Deuteronomy chapter 30, and I'm going to read verses 11 through 20. So here we go. Deuteronomy 30, verses 11 through 20, and the, the headline of this passage is called The Choice of Life or Death. This command I am giving you today is not too, too, not too difficult for you to understand. So there you go. It's not too difficult for you to understand. And it is not beyond your reach. It is not kept in heaven so distant that you must ask. Who will go up to heaven and bring it down so we can hear it and obey it is not kept beyond the sea so far away that you must ask, Who will cross the sea to bring it to us, so we can hear and obey? No, the message is very close at hand. It is, on your, it is on your lips and in your heart, so you can't obey it. So here we go. Here's the command. 
Now listen, today I am giving you a choice between life and death, between prosperity and disaster. For I command you this day to love the Lord your God and to keep his commands, decrees, and regulations by walking in his ways. If you do this, you will live and multiply, and the Lord your God will bless you and the land you are about to enter and occupy. But if your heart turns away and you refuse to listen, and if you are drawn away to serve and worship other gods, then I warn you now that you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live a long, good life in the land you are crossing the Jordan to occupy. Today I have given you the choice between life and death, between blessings and curses. curses. Now I make... Sorry, now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. Oh, that you would choose life. So he's given us a choice between life and death and telling us to choose life so that you and your descendants might live. You can make this choice by loving the Lord, obeying him and committing yourself firmly to him. This is the key to your life. And if you love and obey the Lord, you will live long in the land. The Lord swore to give your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. So we just read that the Lord gives us a choice between life and death. So let's go to Proverbs 18.21. I know Q spoke on this a little bit the other morning. Proverbs 18.21 in the New Living says this. Good morning, guys. I see a bunch of y'all dropping on now. Go ahead and let me know where you're watching from. All right. Proverbs 18.21 says this. The tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences. So we see here, we see we have a choice between life and death. Then in Proverbs 18, 21, we see that the tongue can bring us life and death. And something I, I, the Lord really spoke to me about years ago. Uh, and he really spoke to me about it whenever I was purging certain movies and stuff out of my life. And certain music and everything. Was just that. Everything we do, every thought that we have, every, uh, good morning Samaria, every, every word that comes out of our mouth, every movie we watch, I anything we do, every action serves one of two kingdoms, either the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of hell, the kingdom of light or the kingdom of darkness. Everything we do, and that's what we have to think about, with the words that we speak either serve the kingdom and they are of life, or they serve the kingdom of hell and are, they are of death. So let's go to James, James chapter 3. James chapter 3, verse 1. James chapter 3 says, verse 1 says this, Dear brothers and sisters, not many of you should become teachers in the church, for we who teach will be judged more strictly. Indeed, we all make many mistakes, for if we could control our tongues, we would be perfect and could also control ourselves in every other way. So, so if, if we can control our tongues, then we can control everything else in our life. We can make a large horse go wherever we want by means of a small bit in its mouth. And a small rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go, even though the winds are strong. In the same way, the tongue is a small thing that makes it grand speeches. But a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. And the tongue is a flame of fire. It is a whole world of wickedness, corrupting your entire body. It can set your whole life on fire, for it is set on fire by hell itself. People can tame all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and fish. Uh, we didn't really ever tame our bearded dragon. It didn't, didn't really do anything. It would poop on Brooklyn when she would hold it. So... People can tame all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and fish. We also had, when I was growing up, we had a bird that we definitely did not tame. Um, I remember in the summers, I'd be trying to sleep in. This is back when I was in like high school. I'd be trying to sleep in, and um, sure enough, this bird would wake me up every morning. It was so loud. Anyways, people can tame all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and fish, but no one can tame the tongue. It is restless and evil, full of deadly poison. Sometimes it praises our Lord and Father, and sometimes it curses those who have been made in the image of God. And so blessing and cursing come pouring out of the same mouth. Surely, my brothers and sisters, 
This is not right. Does a spring of water bubble out with both fresh water and bitter water? Does a fig tree produce olives or a grapevine produce figs? No, and you cannot draw fresh water from a salty spring. So, just a simple message this morning. Everything that we speak either speaks life or it speaks death. We cannot allow our mouths to speak both. You either, either set your mind and set your faith on life and speak life and only life, speak the word of God, or then go speak freely and speak what your flesh wants. But don't mix the two. Just like we saw in James, a, a fresh spring cannot produce salty water. Uh, I'll tell this story and then I'll let you go this morning. Um, when I was in Zambia, I was with the team and we came into a village and we noticed everyone in the village, their teeth were rotting. Their clothes had holes in them. We began to talk to them and they're like, yeah, we don't know why. It's this the water that comes out of the uh, well that was dug. That's the way it does it all to our teeth and it rots our clothes. So we went and tasted the water and the water was salty. Whenever the Chinese had come into Zambia to drill this well, they didn't drill it deep enough. And so they, they got salt water instead of fresh water. And that's exactly what in the instance that James is talking about. You cannot have salt water in a fresh spring. If we allow salt water or words of death, words contrary to the word in our life, it'll begin to rot things in our lives. It'll begin to eat away at the things that we need in our lives. Well, thank you so much for watching this morning. If you want to sew into what we're doing, you can go to saltshaker513.com. I'll type it in there real quick. You can also give on Cash App at 513. Who? 513 Salt Shaker. Or you can give right on Zelle, which is some of our favorite ways. Some of our regular givers give on there. That goes right into the account. And what I'm going to do today, those of you that give a gift of over 30 today, I'll send you, if I can get my computer not to autocorrect, I'm going to give you a free shirt if you give a gift over 30 today. Um, so yeah, just if you do that, email us, blame it on me. Say, Pastor Sean said I could have a shirt. So email us. We'll get you your size and your address. And I hope you have a great day. We love you. We'll see you tomorrow bright and early. Have a great day. And remember to speak life.